referring to different reference scriptures without explaining the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. When we were in Israel recently with the men of God and we went on to Caiaphas' house, right there we were with the servant of God and he took us died right down where Christ was put in prison and he spent some night in that dungeon, in that prison where it was so hot and intense, where there was no light, where there was an atmosphere that causes depression and confusion. But he went in there into that dungeon. He was put in there for the purpose of setting you and I free from sin. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. The gospel about Jesus Christ who died on the cross and resurrected on the third day for the purpose of declaring the love of God to you and I. Why were people seeking after Jesus? People were seeking after Jesus because he was the only preacher who preached with the tremendous, outstanding results being manifested. If you are a preacher of forward in faith, if you are a leader in forward in faith, if we are all leaders of forward in faith, I want us to be reminded that our preaching must not be a dead preaching. Our preaching must be a preaching that produces results to the people who come to our fellowship. I'm talking about the gospel of the kingdom of God. That's the reason why they were seeking him. That's the reason why all the people flocked to the disciples and they were saying, where is Jesus? I can imagine the commotion that very moment when people were flocking to the disciples. Each one would come across and say, Peter, can I see Jesus? Before he answers, this one is coming. My brother is about to die. Can I see Jesus, please? Before he answers, someone comes along and say, Peter, can you do something? My mother-in-law is about to die. Before he finishes to address that, someone comes and say, my brother was born blind. Can you do something that he may receive his sight? Before he finishes talking, someone comes up and say, since we got married, we have never had a child. All people seek for thee. Preachers, may I remind you tonight that it is important and essential in this day and time that you don't just preach. There has to be a demonstration of the power of God because this is the reason why Jesus died. This is the reason why he came. This is the reason why he has to have his way in us. Two months ago, a group of women approached our headquarters. They came and they told me that uh, we are coming from a Roman Catholic, but we heard about you. I said, what about me? What is it that you heard about me? They said, at our workplace in government, where we work, someone told us that they had a serious problem. And this problem could not be solved by witch doctors. And we str they struggled as a family to have their child healed. And one of your members referred this person to come here at your headquarters. And the woman came here without the child. And then you prayed for that woman in your office. We don't know whether this is your office. And when you prayed, a miracle happened. One of them, among the women who came, was told that your contract is going to be canceled because the government does not have money. And they came here, and you prayed with them. And all of a sudden, when she went back, she was told that her contract was extended. And when the rumor started to spread in our offices, we say to ourselves, even though we are from Roman Catholic, we would like to visit the headquarters of Forward in Faith and go and meet with this man. 
I want you to know, today's preacher must be an indispensable preacher. Today's preacher in forward in faith must become an outstanding man or woman of God. So I said to them, what do you want me to do for you? And they said, we have also come so that you minister to us. I said to them, do you believe in Jesus, the son of the living God? Sometimes just praying for people without introducing people to Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, will not produce results. So I led them to receive Christ right there in my office. I said, this is the entrance for you to receive what you want to receive. We begin here. We begin here. Sometimes you see people crave for the power of God, but they don't want to start with first things first. We begin with Jesus. In forward in faith, we don't begin by other things. We begin by leading people to receive Christ as their personal Savior and make sure that they are born again. And from there, we make sure that someone receives the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We make sure that someone receives the baptism in water. And so immediately after I led them to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, among one of them, immediately when she received the Christ, the demon manifested in the presence of the rest of the ladies. There were four of them. All of them, they did not belong to our ministry at that time. But you know what happened? That deliverance, after that deliverance, and I prayed for each one of them, after they shared with me their problems, I prayed with them, and they left. You know what happened? They went, and the Lord performed the miracles. Each one of them was answered. Their needs were met. And they went and shared with the other people at their workplace. As I'm talking right now, people look for me. They look for me. Not only from our church. I pray for people at our headquarters. I pray for people. I'm not just a desk man. I don't just sit behind the desk. I don't just sit behind the desk. I pray for people with needs, special needs, and things happen. This last week, someone came and they called and they spoke to my wife and they said, we want to see the Secretary General. And they were asking uh, to meet with me. And I said to my wife, tell them to come. If, if they'll find me here, that will be their blessing. And they found me there in the office early in the morning. I was just about to leave my office and they arrived, the husband and wife. And you know what they said to me? They said, we heard about you. If you are a leader in forward in faith, and if you are a preacher in forward in faith, what is it that people are hearing about us? What is it that people are hearing about us? I want to believe the reason why all the people had to seek after Christ. It is because they heard the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. One thing that I have learned to do in my life is to give Christ his rightful position. When you are a leader and you are a preacher of the word of God, you need to give Christ his rightful position. When you give him his rightful position, he will never put you to shame. I've seen him performing wonders. I prayed for people with serious things, I can tell you. At one time, I prayed for someone who was involved in a car accident and they had a fracture. That very same day, that lady phoned the pastor and I just arrived there in that city. She phoned the pastor and said, Pastor, I've been involved in a car accident. And my leg is actually aching painfully. And it is beginning to swell. And uh, I heard the pastor on the phone saying, oh, 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 oh. So the Holy Spirit said to me, get hold of that phone, that mobile phone, and pray with this woman. And I said, Pastor, give me your phone. Give me your phone. I never asked it, who is that? I said, what happened? He said, There's a, a, one of our leaders has been involved in a car accident. I said, give me your phone. He gave me his phone, and then I said, what is the problem? And she said, my leg is swelling. I've been involved in an accident. And I said, believe God as I'm praying right now. I started praying in tongues that moment, and the woman started responding. And she was saying, 
Oh, the leg is making a, a funny sound. I can hear a funny sound from my leg. I can hear a funny sound from my leg. Then when I said amen, I said to her, Lady, I want you to go to Mtara General Hospital right away and they have the doctors, uh, the medical uh, people take x-rays on your leg. She went there. On arrival, they took x-rays and after taking x-rays, the doctor examined the, the, the x-rays and he said, it looks like there was a crack on your leg, but the, the crack seemed to be mending according to what I'm seeing here. So I think we can only give you painkillers. You can go home. She was given painkillers and she went home. Now, why am I sharing with you these things? People are not looking for dead preachers. People are not looking for ordinary preachers. If you are a deacon of forwarding faith ministries, there has to be some kind of fire. There has to be some kind of fire in your life. There has to be a kind of fire if you are an elder. You know, time is gone. When, uh, when, when we ignore the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom of God. When you begin to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God, things will begin to happen. At one time, we were preaching at a certain place. And then a woman came and she said to me, Pastor, can you please pray for my mother? She is in a serious coma. She's in hospital. She suffered a, a stroke. She can't do anything. She's in a coma. And I said to her, do you believe that Jesus can perform a miracle? And she said, as I was listening when you were preaching, I, I, I felt something. I sensed something in my heart. And I said, this Jesus must touch my mother. That's why I have come. And I said, I'm praying right now. I prayed a short prayer. And after that prayer, you know what happened? That very same hour when I prayed, the mother was in Zimbabwe and I was preaching in Swaziland. That same, same hour when I prayed, a miracle happened. We checked and we found out that the moment the relatives in Zimbabwe called their sister in Swaziland to tell her the good news that because they did not know that someone prayed during that hour, they said, something miraculous has happened. Mama is now awake. She can stand on her own. She can walk on her own. We don't know what happened. And then the daughter in Switzerland said, no, what time did this happen? She was told and then she said, that's the time when the pastor who is preaching here prayed for our mother when we shared with her. Jesus is being sought all over the world. It did not only happen during this time in Galilee. It is happening even today with those preachers and leaders who preach the gospel of the kingdom, believing that God can perform wonders. Yes, he can perform wonders. I was preaching at one time. It was on the last day of an Easter conference. It was on a Sunday. I don't forget this. As I was right in the middle of the sermon, preaching about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is power in proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. When I was preaching about the resurrection of Jesus Christ on that Sunday morning, I don't forget this. A man walked up front and he stopped me as I was preaching. He said, please stop. I said, why? He said, you must come. Something has happened outside. I said, outside where? He said, right outside here, the pastor's house. I said, okay, you go and sit down. I'll come when I'm done. Do you understand? So he looked at me in amazement that I was not serious about what he was trying to say. So I said, go and sit down. So he walked humbly and he went and sat down. And I continued with my preaching. That day, I don't forget what Jesus did on that day. I saw the Lord delivering people in a special way. Demons were manifesting. And people were being delivered on that very same day. Remember, 
When I finished talking about Jesus Christ, that very same hour, I saw a number of people flocking up front to come for the altar call. I never asked the people to come. They came on themselves because they wanted Jesus to minister to them. Even tonight, I'm not going to call people up front. But if someone wants Jesus to minister to them, they'll come up front. You know what happened that very same day. Then I asked it and I said, where is that man who wanted to stop me from preaching Jesus? And he was inviting me outside. Sometimes people have desperate needs that they always feel that their needs are so urgent. They are running out of time. I want to remind you, when Jesus is in a business of doing wonders in response to the word of God, I want to assure you, time may be running out according to you, but time is not running out according to him. Your time is out, but his time is not. It's not. So, he, the man walked up front and he said, it's me. I said, right, let's go out. We walked out of the church building. So, the man said, oh, I'm sorry to, to say this to you. Uh, we have uh, encountered a disturbance. And I said, what disturbance? At the pastor's house? Do you have a fire break or what? Then he said, no, the pastor's child has passed you on. I said, on a Sunday, on the last day of the conference, when we are preaching about the resurrection of Jesus, when we are preaching about the kingdom of God, and you are coming to tell me that the pastor's son has passed on, he has died. I want to assure you, Jesus is going to resurrect, he's going to raise that, that son of the pastor. The man said to me, He's already dead. And I said, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, Jesus is going to resurrect that little boy. So we walked. As we approached the house, I saw women with java material around them, weeping. Some who were cooking outside, they stopped cooking. And they were weeping, crying out loud. As they were crying out loud, I walked there. Then I said to them, can we have silence? I said, where is the child? They say, in this room. When I walked in there, I got inside. The child was wrapped in a blanket. The child was completely dead. I said, give me the child. The woman was holding the child, gave me the child. And then I prayed. And I said, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command life to come back. And death, leave right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, who resurrected on the third day from the dead. And I said, Amen. Just that moment when I said, Amen, I didn't realize where the head was. And the head of the child was on my left. Then I heard the child screaming. And the women who were seated crying stood up. All of them in that room, they stood up. And they started shouting, Jesus! Jesus, Jesus, they were crying. A few seconds ago, they were crying. They started shouting, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I'm saying to you tonight, on that day in Galilee, everybody was seeking after Jesus. Right here at this conference in Australia, there are people who are seeking after Jesus. They are not seeking for a preacher. They are not seeking for Papa, but they are seeking for Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, the miracle worker, right here at this conference. Right here at this conference. Now, I want you to be informed. Immediately, when they say that to the Lord, people are seeking after you. What did Jesus say? He said, I hear you. But I still want to cross over to the other side. There are people who are waiting for me there.
Jesus is not looking for those that are already with him. He is now looking for the lost. If you are here tonight as a leader, I want you to be reminded that our greatest business is not to keep the kingdom of God with us. It is to go out to the other side with the kingdom, with the message of the kingdom of heaven and proclaim Jesus Christ crucified. So, I want to thank God. When I left that room, the pastor's house, Message went around in that small city that there's a preacher from Harare and this preacher prayed for the dead child and the dead child arose from the dead. As people were talking about that, some people started looking for me and I had already left for Harare. I want to ask this simple question. How many people are looking for us? In the city where you are coming from, you are a leader in forward in faith. I have already told you that thousands and thousands of people are looking for Baba Kuti. Right now, on the very day when I was leaving, coming here, two bishops from another church had walked into my office. I said, what can I do for you? They said to me, we have heard that uh, you, when we want to see Baba Kuti, we come through you. When you are here, so we heard someone told me that you are here and we have come. We want to see Baba Guti. I said, unfortunately, he is out of the country. But I can tell you stories and stories of people who come looking for Baba Guti. And the things that they are looking Baba Guti for are the things that Jesus Christ declared. That if you believe, greater works shall you do than these. than these. Real preaching has to involve the word of the cross. Real preaching has to expose who Christ is among other Christ that you have heard about. Real preaching must uplift the cross of Jesus Christ. Real preaching brings out the demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't like a service that is a dead service where people just come sing, listen to preaching and they go home without someone experiencing some sort of deliverance, some healing, some assurance in a certain area, in a particular area, without injecting a, a certain level of hope in the believers. I like the kind of preaching. That's why I like my father, Professor Ezekiel Guti. He doesn't like dead things at his age. He looks for fire. He looks for fire. When there is no fire, he complains. He complains. The preaching of Jesus Christ brings with it the hunger and thirst for Christ among his people. When you have a need that requires the hand of Jesus, and when we preach Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, you begin to see things happening in your life. As I was there in the dungeon, and Baba was praying in his voice, changed and became magnetic in that atmosphere. And I liked what the Lord said to me and he said to me, I called you to be a preacher right in there in that dungeon. When the Lord said that to me, my faith was quickened in that particular area when I was in the dungeon as the man of God was praying with us about Jesus Christ who suffered on the cross. The book of Isaiah 53 verse 11 declares, he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. 
tonight I want you to know that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, is seated at the right hand of the Father. And what is he about to see and what he is about to witness is to see what he suffered for. He is waiting to see the results of what he suffered for. And preachers today must be in a position to preach so that the results that he suffered for will be witnessed among the children of men. Tonight, I want to ask you to rise up because of our time. Oh, yes, Jesus is Lord. I have not known a man like him. The Bible assures us it was during that same day a time a man who was full of leprosy came and he said, Lord, have mercy on me. And he said to him, I believe that if you are willing, you can cleanse me from leprosy. It was on that day. And the Bible tells us, this again was after Jesus had casted devils. He had casted devils. He had casted devils on that particular day. It was terrible, I tell you. And a lot of people were healed on that particular day. The man said, Lord, I know. If you are willing, leprosy will go away from me. Jesus said, as he stretched out his hand, he said, I will. Tonight, he is willing to see you crossing over. Tonight, he is willing to see you rising above your situation. Tonight, he is willing to see you rising up above your limitation. Tonight, Jesus Christ is willing to set you free. I know somebody is going to be free tonight. Not only that, I know somebody is going to receive his miracle tonight. You have been waiting for that miracle at this conference. That, that miracle is yours. Jesus is willing. And when he says he's willing, he's not trying. When he says he's willing, he's saying what he means. He's not mincing his word. When Jesus says he is willing, indeed, he is ready to minister to you. Go back a shaka Tapera lo hare shaki mahunga kukutu wa tepeke lo na. Na ru sheme nena moka saba kahangure pakunu anze. Cheke teka teka reba kusundika. Ya mu haku kotera na mu kotera na mu angushie nenga. Shinere lele la ru shana kasa. Kambu wakae, kambu wakae. Marokoto kosanga kashime me. I want to make sure that as you are coming here, if you are not born again, I want to give you this opportunity to receive Christ as your personal Savior. The Word of God says, For God so loved the world, but He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish. There is no reason for you to perish. Tonight, you can receive Jesus as your personal Savior. Now, if you haven't received Christ as your personal Savior, you are the only people I will allow to come here on the stage, right there by the corner. If you are here, and you'd like to receive Jesus. This is where we are going to begin tonight. If you are here, you can go on my left hand side, which is your right, right by the corner on the stage. Horebo kote mbo kashe na hangu, naruta tu kasonga kasheka, mimbembe yataka na wasanga luwapoko na hashe, miyakunda bo soko tapereta kuhangu, shimaye sela oreho sela, some of you tomorrow will give you time to testify because you would want to come and testify what God is going to do tonight, what Jesus is going to do tonight in your life. Expect that miracle and the Lord is going to do it for you. I'm not talking about stories. I'm talking about what I know. I'm talking about what I know. One day as I was talking to the man of God, he said, son, Give me your hands. And then he began to squeeze my hands. He began to squeeze my hands. From that day, when he squeezed my hands, up to this day, if I touch you, when you are ready, you will receive your miracle. No matter what, you will receive your miracle. In the mighty name of Jesus.
Can I hear verses, please? In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever it is, Shabo, Mamba Kata. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shabo, Tatata. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shatabota. Shatabota. Tarota, Shekoda. Shita Hato Kota. Oh, Yama Sheta Haso. Posheta Riha. Sheta Mohasena. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. When you are ready, you receive your miracle. Shut up. You said free. Be free. Be free. You are highly lifted. In the mighty name of Jesus. Be free. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, receive your miracle now. When you are ready, Jesus. you receive your miracle. Shut up, my son. Shut up, my son. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus.